Okay, so um, I don't want to preach really. Um, what I want to do is I'm going to share an experience um, more on testimony based so that I think it'll be easier for all of us to understand, um, you know, the, the pathway each one of us really take to reach a particular point and where we, uh, we know and we know that God is good all the time. So um, this morning you heard Jade speaking. Yeah? Did you all learn anything from there? Yeah? Hebrews 13.5 God will never leave you, no, forsake you. Correct. Okay. Now, um, somebody... I know Jade always talks about property. I don't know why, I don't know what is she gunning at, but... <laughs> but if somebody comes and you have a property dispute, what would you do? We fight, right? We have lawyers, we have the police, we have so many things happening, correct? What's happening to us? Anger, very good. Pride, yes. Mine, yes, it's all about me. It is, right? It's my property. I inherited it, correct? It's mine. I want it. Perfect. What else do you go through? Jealousy. Jealousy. Wow. Anger. I'm waiting for one word because I'm going to lead you into um, this particular topic which is really close to my heart because that's where I started. Okay, it's not property, but yeah. Um, we are talking offense. Do you know what's offense? What's offense? I am offended. Means what? Hurt? What else? What else? What does offense do to you? Poisoning? Unforgiveness? It's like, why should I forgive them? Correct? Yeah? Bitterness? Pride? What happens to us inside? Yeah, those are feelings. Physically, what happens to us? Sickness? Do you know that a lot of offense eventually leads to a physical symptom? Why? Because offense is poison. Offense leads to worry, leads to fear, leads to unforgiveness, and eventually poisons our bodies. Okay? It may start with a headache, suddenly out of the blue you'll feel, I've got migraine. What's this? Because you are stressed, you're worried. It starts here. And then you start feeling pain. You start feeling things that you've never felt before. You start feeling weakness. Correct? And of course, it goes on to a lot of other things which I don't want to discuss. So, um, I'm going to tell you about an incident on um, how offense really took over my life at one time. Um, but through this offense, um, when I made a choice of receiving Jesus as my Lord, God and Savior, I realized that I could put offense, offense under my feet. It wasn't easy. It's really difficult. But with Jesus, all things are possible. Okay? So, um, I'm going to go back right to the time um, somewhere in 2008. I wasn't in the world at all, okay? I was in the world. And when I say I was in the world, I was absolutely against praise and worship, teachings. Church was an obligation. I would just go to church because I have to go to church. Otherwise, there was nothing about Jesus in my life, okay? It was all about work. I was very career-oriented. I was working for a financial giant. I had a very high position. And I was making a lot of money and pride because I had the money. I would want to wear branded stuff and all those things, okay? So my life was all worldly. There was no Jesus. And my husband was already in the word. And um, he started playing Brother Johnson CDs in the car. And I used to get so upset whenever he would pay. I'm like, why is this man yelling? Why does he yell? I don't want to hear this. So 
somehow, but you know, he would play. And um, I remember traveling from Bombay to Goa by car, and the entire 13-hour journey was Brother Johnson. So you can imagine what was going on in my head. I decided I am going to ignore that and I'm going to look out. Surprisingly, my husband didn't listen to me and he continued playing with Brother Johnson, but he knew the end result in the beginning. Praise God. So I heard th Brother Johnson sow and the seed for 13 hours in the, in, uh, the car. It didn't change me. It didn't change me at all. I continued my lifestyle. As I said, I was working for an organization. <clears throat> so I joined that organization in 2008, and um, I thought no end of myself. And everybody said, oh, wow, you've come from this organization. You must have come with so much of experience and things like that. So I was on a high. I was, I, when, I would walk, when I would walk into the office, I could see the security guard standing and, you know, all those things. So it was, you know, you know what you feel? You feel that pride. You have that high about yourself. Okay, that happened. Fortunately or unfortunately, I would say fortunately, my organization, after hiring me, has decided that it's time to downsize. And my unit was new. So whose unit gets affected first? The newer units, because they probably don't need them. So now, how do you get rid of per a person without giving them excess money and ask them to leave? There are diff different tactics, right? This is my assumption, I don't know. But <clears throat> my boss who hired me, suddenly started changing tactics, okay? From being one of the most likable person there, I started, it was very subtle, it was very slow, but it suddenly has so happened that she started keeping me away from meetings, not giving me sufficient information, and I was being pulled up, which I felt, I felt was for no reason or fault of mine, okay? So I was not used to anyone speaking against me. Why? Because I was on a high. Well, it continued for a couple of months. It started getting bad to worse. Now, when I say bad to worse, we used to have a unit of 300 people on the floor. She would call me and she would fire me in front of all those people. And I would be just standing there and I'm like, okay, respect, because she's my senior, I cannot give it back. But I, as a person, I, as a person, I know how I was. I would never keep quiet. I was known for my sharp tongue. Okay, so that's why Jade always says, you know, give it back, because she knows how I used to give it back. <laughs> so, yeah, but for some reason, I wouldn't say anything out of respect. But things started getting so bad that I started bunking work. I didn't want to go back to work. I couldn't stand my boss anymore. If I would meet anybody, I would start talking about my boss. You know, she's like this, she's like that, and use a few bad words and all in between. She's like this. That's spitting venom. Okay? I used to do that. But it wasn't giving me it wasn't making me happy or it wasn't satisfying me. It was just, I was just getting bad to worse. I was getting more and more negative. Every time I would think of her and see her, I would only be bad-mouthing her. I would only be speaking negative things. And you know, when you go on speaking negative things, it manifests. Why? Because life and death is in the power of your tongue. Are we powerful beings? Why? Because we are made in the image and likeness of God. God spoke the world into existence. He spoke it, let there be light. And there was light. We are made in his image and likeness. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. So, as I spoke, life became harder. As life became harder, I... You know, it, when you are in a particular position and you have so many people under you, you cannot be bunking. Correct? You have a whole unit to take care of. But I started trying to wash away my hands from my responsibilities. I, I started doing it because I had no God in my life. I wanted to do everything the way I thought was right. 
I was working on my own ability. And mind you, I would travel from home to my workplace, which was about half an hour by rickshaw. And I would be praying, I would be saying the Navinas. I would be doing all that. Because that is what I was taught. I was not taught about declaring, I didn't know about scriptures, I didn't know anything. But I would, I would say the infant Jesus prayer. I would say all those things. But, and I even went to the extent of saying, I hope my boss gets transferred. I hope, it was not about changing myself, it was, I hope they get away from here. They have to make my, my path clear. It was all about me. Okay? Whether it was fair or unfair, how we would think about it now, would, I don't know. But today, where I stand, I believe that I was on the wrong. Okay? Because I did not know the word of God. I did not know Colossians 3.23, which says that you consider yourself working for the Lord and not for men. Because who's your provider? God is your provider. So who are you working for? The Lord. Colossians 3.23. Praise God. Okay. So that happened. Now, for the best part of it, I didn't want to go to work. In the meanwhile, Jade was about four years old, okay? And Jade got chicken pox. Now, for me, that was an excuse. I'm like, oh, I'm going to stay at home now. I don't need to go to work because I have an excuse, right? My child is unwell, so I might as well stay at home. So I was home. And as I was home, I would look into the mirror every day and I would see one boil, I'm like, oh, I think I am getting chicken pox. Every day I would look into the mirror and I would keep saying, I'm going to get chicken pox. Oh, I think this is chicken pox. And my mum who was with me would say, nonsense, you already had chicken pox as a child, how can you get it again? Right? We all know that normally you don't get, you probably might get a mild, uh, a mild attack but not a full-blown one. Brothers and sisters, the attack that I had was negatively supernatural. It attacked me so badly, it was through my scalp, on my face, on my body. I looked like a leopard. It was so bad. What did I do? I called for the sickness from the unseen world to the seen. Because every day I would stand in front of the mirror and I would see with my spiritual eyes, my imagination, that there's a chicken pox boil on my face. And I brought it from the unseen to the seen. Okay, that was the negative part of it. I had a full-blown chicken pox attack. That happened, I called my boss, and I told her, oh, now I can't come because now I have chicken pox. I took it as a blessing. I'm like, I don't have to go to work. Now for the next 20 days, I can sit in the house. I don't have to go to work. Imagine that was what was happening to me. And in the eight years that I worked for the previous organization, I'm not even boasting, but I'm just telling you, I used to win awards for my team. Because that is the kind of worker I was. Everything was about myself. I needed to do well. I was ambitious. I needed to grow up the, up the ladder. So I would work really hard. And in this organization, I just slumped. Why? Because I was, I was getting affected by what somebody else was speaking about me. I was taking offense. I was taking offense. So what did offense do to me? It changed my character. It changed my physical health. Yeah? I would only speak negative things. Eventually, my husband said, I don't think... I, I would cry every day. I would say, just put in your papers. But I didn't want to put in my papers. Why? If I put in my papers, where's all the money going to come from? When am I going to get my branded clothes? Where am I going to have the position where I could just take out my card and say I'm a VP of a, of a big organization? I wouldn't be able to do all that. So I was willing to suffer to hold on to a worldly position for money. What does Hebrews 11.5 say? What does Hebrews 11.5 say? 
stay away from the love of money. What was I doing? Holding on. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. <clears throat> okay, that happened. Eventually, I put in my papers. I put in my papers. I resigned from the organization. I had an exit interview with the HR where I just gave them the worst ever um, you know, an exit interview where I was only telling them about all the bad things. I never spoke about how bad I was as a person, but I was speaking about somebody else, what they did to me, how I was affected by them. Well, I resigned. I decided to take a break at home and stay home and be a good mother <laughs> because I used to work and I, I considered my career as priority and I would come home really late in the night and I would depend on my parents to take care of my daughter. My parents would help me with, and, and there was a maid, so everything was taken care of, care of by not me, but my parents and the maid. Well, um, down the line, lots of things happened. Uh, life went on. And uh, there was this one incident in my life in 2014, that 2014, 29th of January, that just changed my life. Um, well, I would discuss this on a, on a different date, this testimony on a different date, but just to give you a gist of it, uh, my brother, who I'm really close to, who um, had a really bad accident, and he was on the ventilator, and the doctors had given a bad report. And that day, God spoke to me. So, as I said, I wasn't in the Word, but every day, my husband would make my daughter recite the Psalm 91. Okay, so I knew the Psalm 91 without learning it. Because for years, from the time she was three years old, we've been saying the Psalm 91 every night. So the Good News translation, I know it by heart. So that night when, at 11 o'clock, when the phone rang, God spoke to me. He said, when you call to me, I will be with you. In times of trouble, I will be with you. I will rescue you and honor you. I will reward you with a long life. I will save you. Okay, so he said, if you call to me, I will answer you. So that is the day I called out to the Lord. Okay, why? Because I was in trouble, right? I felt something negative happening. And that is the time we got a call telling us about my brother. But I was at peace. I was in a very strange peace, which I don't know where did it come from. I don't know. Now I know. That time I didn't know. Okay? I was in a state of rest. What is a state of rest? No worry, no trouble. Is it because I didn't love my brother? No. Have you ever been in that state of rest? Have you ever sensed it ever? Sometimes when most of us are parents, right? Sometimes when our children go out in the night and they come back really late, when you hear the door opening, and they are in bed. Do you get a sigh of relief that they are home? That split second, that sigh of relief, that, that feeling that you get is your state of rest because you know that they are home safe. Okay? The same way, God wants you to be in that state at all times. At all times. He wants you to be in the state of rest at all times. That is the day Jesus, through Psalm 91, through the word of God, gave me that rest. Long story short, <clears throat> all that happened. I remember um, I decided that I need to know and I need to build a relationship with Jesus. After so many years of my husband praying for me, not once did he force me, not once, to go for a prayer meeting or you know, to join the family prayer. I would just do it out of, you know, he's my husband, I need to do, I need to listen. He's a very godly man, praise God. It's through him, through him, and a lot of other people in our lives that I was able to realize Jesus. Okay, Jesus was always there for me, but I fell in love with Jesus on 29th of January, 2014. 
because through him I realized that, sh that shalom peace, that peace that transcends all understanding. I understood that on that day. Okay, now going back to the offense, not that I changed, not that anything else happened, peace. But if anybody would call me and still speak about my boss, I would still be spitting venom. She was still that, that woman, she was still that person, not a nice person, you know, she did this to me, still. In 2015, somebody mentioned about a retreat called Jesus Encounter in Bombay. So I decided to go for the retreat, this was my first retreat, I wanted to go and see what a retreat was like. So I registered for the retreat, it was a three day stay in retreat. So as I entered, they took away our phones, so we could, didn't have our phones with us. So I was without a phone, I couldn't text anyone, I didn't know what was, what was going to happen in the retreat. If I had my phone, even if the retreat was boring, at least I had my phone. But I didn't have my phone, praise God. It started with mass. There were about 60-70 people at the retreat, they were all sitting down there, mostly women. I sat down, the priest started mass. Brothers and sisters, I don't know what took over. I started crying. I don't know what happened. He started with the mass, I started crying. And it was not crying like with little tears, I was wailing. I was hiccuping. Okay, I didn't have tissues with me so I was using my sleeves to wipe my face. I was so embarrassed and people are kind of looking at me as like, what's wrong with her? But I couldn't stop crying. I just went on and on and on crying. I don't think I ever cried so much in my life. Okay, crying happening. At the end of the mass, the priest is like, come to the altar and, um, you know, the blessed sacrament was exposed. So I went to the altar, wailing, touched the blessed sacrament. Something left me on that day. As soon as I came back to my seat, I again felt calm. I felt peace. A very different piece. I stopped crying, I sat down. It took me time to recover because I was hiccuping. It was so bad. Thankfully, nobody asked me what's happening and all because I would have been really embarrassed. Because it's all about myself. Now, what if, you know, what if they think that I'm weak? What if they think I'm, you know, one of those types who'll only be crying all the time? It was all about me. I didn't want everybody to look at me. It was me, me. Praise God. <clears throat> that happened. Praise God. Next day, this went on. Next day, uh, as the retreat went on, they were talking about demons, about the spiritual realm. Not, yeah, spiritual realm, about forgiveness, about praying in tongues, all that. So I learned a lot of new things. I didn't know there was something called the spiritual realm where the Holy Spirit resides. The power of your words. So many things. I learned so much. And the best was the third day. Because the third day they said, there's going to be infilling of the Holy Spirit and then there's going to be confession. I was like, oh my God, confession. Something that I had not been to for years. I had so many sins in mind because they gave us a sheet called examining your conscience and everything was something that I could tick. They gave us a booklet, brothers and sisters, I filled that booklet because I couldn't stop writing. And as I was writing, I started crying again. In those three days, the amount I must have cried, I must have not cried in my lifetime. But why was I crying? It's because I sensed the Lord had forgiven me. I felt the love of Christ and I was willing to let go of everything that kept me in bondage. It was a decision. It wasn't easy. 
as I wrote down each and every sin that I thought that I had committed right from the time I could remember, I wrote it down. And thank you, Jesus. The priest that I got, as soon as I sat next to him, again I started wailing. And I, was, I couldn't even talk. He's like, what happened? And I'm like, my sins. So many sins. So he's like, what's in the book? I said, all my sins. He's like, okay, read. So I don't know how long it took, but I read my sins. And as I was reading my sins, I was crying. He listened to me so patiently without even, you know, um, disturbing me in, in between and interrupting and saying anything. So patiently, he just sat and he listened. I don't know how long it, it must, honestly speaking, I'm sure it must have been over an hour. But that day he just said, and I was thinking, the worst thing is like, I have so many sins. Imagine the penance after that. How many Hail Marys, how many Our Fathers, God knows how, what I have to say. So I was thinking of that also and getting worked up. Because I did not know act of contrition by heart. What if he tells me, say, act of contrition? I don't know. So all that was stressing me out. He's saying, relax. Jesus has already forgiven you. Do you know that when you repent, God does not remember any of these 48, 50 pages that you wrote? Do you know that when Jesus died of your cro on the cross, he died for you and you are forgiven past, present and future? I was amazed. I'm like, if Jesus died for me when I, before I was born, he already knew the sins that I, was, that I was to commit and he's already forgiven me. Why am I the way I am now? Why am I like this? Why is it always... Thankfully, in the sense, at that time, I didn't even realize it was all about me. I was still selfish. Still. Still thinking of myself. I hadn't learned the lesson yet. But that day, as I received Jesus as my Lord, God and Savior, I was on fire. I could feel my hands. I was like heightened, you know? When you go for certain retreats and you come back, Sometimes you just get this feeling in your palm, heat. I was on fire. When I was coming home and I was sitting in the rickshaw going home, I was blessing everybody on the road. I'm like, oh, that person, I don't even know, bless them. Bless them and beggars, whoever were on the road, I was blessing everybody. I was filled with the love of Christ. I just wanted to share it with everybody. As I said, I was never a happy church goer. I never enjoyed going for mass. The next day, I got up at 4 o'clock in the morning to do Bible study, which is something impossible. If somebody said, Natasha and Bible study, oh my God. I got up at 4 o'clock, did Bible study. 7 o'clock, I went for Mass. When I came out for Mass, I'm like, I'm wondering what time is the next Mass? Maybe I should go again. That was me. I loved being that way. I loved my new self. Okay? Now, Doing all that is, I was depending on what? Feeling. Does God work on feelings, brothers and sisters? No. I was working on my feelings. After I went for that retreat, <clears throat> hardly one week, two weeks, I lost all those feelings. Feelings are gone. Feelings are gone. Getting up at four o'clock became a task again. I didn't want to get up at 4 o'clock again. Oh my God, who's going to get up at 4 o'clock? But something had changed. I still loved Jesus. I was ready to build a relationship with him. I was ready to listen to Brother Johnson. That is new. I didn't want to listen to Brother Johnson. I didn't want to listen to him yelling. I was willing to listen to anybody. I started listening to teachings. His CDs, we had about four CDs. I listened to all the CDs. I started reading matter, I started reading books. There was a very new meaning to mass when I went for mass. I would understand the mass in a better way. I would not comment on the priest and his homily anymore. I'm like, so long, what is he saying? It is not even related to what, what our life is. All that is to happen earlier. Coming out from mass, you would be gossiping about the priest. 
about what somebody wore. Somebody, oh, that person, they have, see the guts, they were strapless and they came to church. See that, uh, uh, what are they called? I forgot what they are called. The ones who give you communion, the sacramental uh, coordinators, or I don't know what they're called. Yeah. yeah, Eucharistic ministers. I would comment on them. How can they give uh, communion? See how they're dressing and coming. And you know what they do outside? You know, this one, that one, uh, that one has left their husband. This one has gone to somebody else's. What kind of talk is this? This was the Catholic I was. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. I learned Jesus, through his love, taught me not to condemn, not to judge. I, not that I don't do it now. I do it. But as soon as I do it, Holy Spirit, gently, and then I'm like, I rebuke my words and I cancel the harvest. It's always there on the tip of my tongue. Even if I comment and I say, not me, my seven-year-old son will correct me. That day I was singing a very random song. I don't know if some of you have heard this song, because earlier I used to watch a series called Supernatural, about these two Winchester brothers. And they used to have a song called Carry On My Wayward Son. Okay, what is the meaning of wayward? Wayward means somebody who's like uncontrollable, doing what they want. Okay, so the song says, carry on my way, and I'm humming that, carry on my way, unknowingly. My seven-year-old son comes and says, Mama, what are you singing? I'm like, I, I, can, I rebuke what I said, and I cancel the harvest in Jesus' name. <clears throat> Going back to offense. I spoke about my boss. Now, after I came back from the retreat, hardly one week had passed, and um, I was in Bandra, on, uh, and I had just caught an auto rickshaw to go home. And as I was going home, I saw my boss on the road. God is like, look, your boss. I'm like, and I'm like, in Hindi, I'm telling the rickshaw, Bhaiya, roko, roko. And the guy is wondering what happened to me. I just caught the rickshaw. He stopped. I ran. I literally flew out of the rickshaw. Okay, now I don't know where I got those wings from. I went, I ran towards her. Just imagine Bollywood movies, how they go in slow motion. Think of it like that. I went and I hugged her. I had no feeling, ill feeling about her anymore. The same Natasha who would be speaking venom about this particular person same person had changed and it was not my ability it was my choice my choice God's ability when I hugged her she was like this because she knew what I was doing she was stunned I'm like hi how are you so she's like yeah I'm good so I'm like, uh, you're going somewhere? She's like, no, no, I'm going home. I'm not getting a, a, a rickshaw. She's like, I'm like, come, come, I'll take you home. My house was before her house, but I decided to drop her home. Love of Christ, praise God. In those 10 minutes that I sat in the rickshaw, I seeked forgiveness for what I had done. I spoke to her. She told me what was happening in the organization that how she was retrenched because of the change in the organization and we became friends on Facebook. Okay, we are still friends on Facebook. But thank you, Jesus. Through the love of Christ, I was able to forgive. I was able to let go of offense. Is it easy? If you're having trouble with another person, is it easy to forgive? Why? Because that forgiveness, unforgiveness that we have, we think is a feeling. I don't feel like forgiving. Brothers and sisters, unforgiveness is not a feeling. It's a choice. Even if you don't feel like doing it, you need to ask the Holy Spirit. 
help me, show me. I don't feel like forgiving this person. This person has hurt me so much. I don't feel like doing it. Receive the love of Christ. Take that decision to forgive that person. Say it. I forgive that person with the love of God. And I fill that person with the love of Christ and I release them from that unforgiveness. Do you know what happens to you when you do that in the spiritual realm? Chains are broken. Chains of bondage are broken. You will receive your healing supernaturally. Sometimes even without asking. You do not know when you get healed. So let me talk about the healing part of it. <clears throat> so before I went for the retreat, I had this chronic leg pain. Okay, and this pain was so bad, it would start from my, um, from the, you know, uh, from my foot, middle of my foot, and it would radiate till my knee. And that pain was so excruciating, I would, I would want to cry. But I have a, I believe that I had a very high resistance to pain. So I would not cry. Even after taking a painkiller, it would not go. It was that bad. <clears throat> the day I cried and went to the altar, that particular priest, um, they told us that he had a gift of knowledge. And he said, there is this one person in the room who's healed from leg pain. But that day, I did not realize. I did not claim that healing. He said one person. I didn't even realize that I, I had that pain. A month probably, because this, this pain that I would get is not continuous. It would suddenly come. Suddenly I would get that pain. And then I would suffer. Sometimes, almost the whole night, I would be battling that pain. Taking tablets, getting up, trying to walk, or massaging, nothing. It would just go off on its own. And I never went to the doctor thinking that, Are this pain, God knows what. How many years? Four, five years. I realized in that one month, I didn't get that pain. That pain had gone. I never got that pain till date. How many years? 2015, 2024. I didn't get that pain. Pain of unforgiveness left me the day I decided to forgive and let go. Because every time I realized I would think of this person and get angry, that pain would aggregate. Unknowingly. But now when I think of her, I don't feel that negative feeling. I don't feel, um, I don't even regret. I feel that when I was there, it was an experience because today I can stand here and share it with everybody. Thank you, Jesus. He didn't put me in that situation. He got me out of that situation. That experience is a learning. It was a test, which today is a testimony. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. So we're talking about offense. Are we all easily offended? Easily, right? Very easily. So small things offend us. It could be anything. You know, in, in Australia, <clears throat> road rules are very strict. So people follow road rules very easily. Nobody will, uh, you know, suddenly cut you. Nobody will break signals. Nobody will just drive for the heck of driving. All that doesn't happen. It's been a while since we were there, so when we come down to India, it's like a shock. It's like, what's this? What's happening? I was in Mumbai and I was shocked. I'm a Mumbai girl. I, I was born and brought up in Mumbai. And I always had this thing. When I go abroad, no, when I come back to Mumbai, I will not act like a foreigner. I will not say this is polluted, this is like this, this is that way. This time, I'm like, what is this? Every second place is dug up, everything, and every time some, somebody would move a little, and I would be like, what are they doing? What am I doing? I'm getting offended by such small things. Small things. It's destroying my peace. 
it came to that point i was sitting in the, again sitting in the auto rickshaw going home and as we were going home my auto rickshaw banged the auto rickshaw in front and i said wow now there's going to be a fight and i started praying in tongues honestly brothers and sisters those people who banged each other didn't even bother the traffic is that that good in bombay that nobody is willing to even bother if you look at the state of the cars they are beautiful they've got like good uh, texture on the cars they've got these rounded bumps and all very fancy looking cars they have in bombay now praise god so every time i would see an auto rickshaw or a bike or a car crossing paths holy spirit taught me to praise praise god praise god praise god i think my brother also must have seen me saying that praise god he's just he's just telling me about something and i'm like praise god because i do not i do not want to ruin my peace i do not want to get into a state of offense i want to practice what my lord has taught me if i am his disciples i will if i am his disciple i will know the truth and the truth will set me free amen and that is the truth that is the truth god has given us instructions in the bible do we follow it no 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 it doesn't work like that it doesn't work here in goa it is different in bombay it is different it must be working in australia but it doesn't work here god's word is the law and the law does not change in any circumstance or for anyone it does not discriminate what is law what is law law of nature law of gravity does it change is it different if i jump from a sixth floor in australia and sixth floor in goa same 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 outcome broken bones meeting god early huh all those correct same god's law is the same his word when spoken when sent out will not return to him void without accomplishing what it was called to do amen god's word is a double edged sword yeah dividing soul and spirit bones and marrow and judging the secret thoughts of the heart praise god praise god are we all believers do we all believe do we all receive jesus as our lord god and savior yes. amen praise god okay so today <clears throat> what i thought is i'm going to do an exercise with you all okay how it helps me let's try it out how well it works so um today i'm going to lead you into um choice is yours okay nobody's forcing anybody choice is yours you want to do it no problem you can sit and watch however i'm going to make you all create an imagination in your mind okay and i'm going to i'm i'm going to lead you to let go of a lot of things let go okay so this is a this is a form of healing okay and after that we will um we will call out people who need healing um any healing anything that you would want to discuss or if you want uh, prayers for something we will teach you okay remember one thing we are all here to pray for you yes but today what we learned um as a part of the team as a part of jclm is we are not here to pray for people we are here to teach you to teach you the truth the truth that will set you free okay so we are all we all have been given the same authority is it different is it different the sister nisha has a uh, have different authority than you brother johnson same authority correct same authority we are made in the same image and likeness of god there's nothing different 
But once we learn to apply the truth, the kingdom principles, we'll be able to do it throughout our life's journey. Not just for ourselves, but for people who are around us. All right? Okay. Praise God. Okay, any questions, anything that you'd like to ask me before I lead you into this prayer? Anything? Anyone? Anything? Sure? Sure, sure. forgiveness also hmm. for the person hmm. and the person didn't forgive me hmm. okay hmm. I tried and I blessed them and I'm praying that to bless them Praise God. but I'm already hurted till I'm hurt okay. but I've kept him in prayer hmm. but but I can't forgive them but I'm praying that to forgive still but now only I've learned the prayer okay. so I'm trying to bless them and forgive them so okay. Praise God. Praise God. Okay, so her, her question was that she's willing to forgive, but, she's not, but she cannot forget. Correct? So every time she thinks of that situation, she feels hurt. Okay? So ideally speaking, you have not forgiven. You, you have asked for forgiveness, whether the person has accepted it or not. Okay? But whenever you think of it and you still feel hurt, it's, you're still dwelling in unforgiveness. Hold on, hold on. Not a difficult thing to do. The best part is you're willing to let go. Correct? So today we are going to let go. Okay? And I will teach you how to sustain it. Okay? It is not that we do one exercise today and it is done. No. We have to sustain it. Correct? Did Jade mention about the tap of dirty water? When you pour the water, what happens? The dirty water is replaced by clean water. Same way with unforgiveness. So we are putting that dirty bucket of um, dirty water, bucket of dirty water under the tap. We are putting in the word of God inside the clean water. And that unforgiveness that is there is going to eventually flow out. So it's a continuous process. It's a continuous process. I am not saying that you have to sit and dwell on that. No. But whenever you think of that situation or that person, you need to say, I would like you to write it down because it's good for all of us. If you can write it down or type it on your phone. It says, Spirit of the Lord is upon the person. Spirit of the Lord is upon... Okay, if you don't have any book or whatever, it, you remember that this video is going to be there online. So you will be able to, if you go through the video again, you should be able to see it. Else, is there any sheets of paper that they can write on? There is? Okay, there are. The, the, do you want a book? Do you want... Uh, Jade, can you... Okay. Special prayer. I will repeat. Yeah, 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 that one. Yeah. Will you, uh, Anisha, will you be able to translate this and give it to them in Konkani also, okay? Okay, it says, it goes like this. It's scriptural, so it says, Spirit of the Lord is upon so and so person. Okay, this is when you're seeking um, forgiveness from somebody else. Okay? Or even if you are going to speak to somebody and you're doubtful on how that person is going to respond back to you, you're concerned about that, you're worried about how they're going to talk, are they going to be rude, are they going to give it back to you? If that is a concern, this is what you need to be prepared with. It says, Spirit of the Lord is upon the person. God himself has anointed him or her. Spirit of the Lord is upon so and so. Okay? God Himself has anointed them. He has filled them with His love. Thank you, Jesus. Last part. Okay, say so Spirit of the Lord is upon so and so. God Himself has anointed them, filled them with His love, filled them with His love, 
and set them free from all bondages. Amen. Okay, now I'm going to ask you a question. So now, when you have to forgive somebody, what are you going to say? Good. My God himself has anointed me. He has filled me with his love and set me free from the bondage of unforgive. Awesome. Good pupils. Good, good. Do you want to just do a Konkani version of it? Praise God. So, Konkani, Borela, uh, anybody wants in Konkani? Luke chapter 4, 18. Yes, 4, 18. Does anyone want it, uh, want it repeated in Konkani? Please put up your hands. We are most happy to do it. Anybody needs it in Konkani? Do you want it in Konkani? Okay. So she, okay. Just her. So she, you can... So we are going to talk about this. 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 देवान तक आपले मौगान बोला, अनि बॉक्सर ने दिउंग जाइना त्या बंदन अंतलन सुटका दिला। सुन मैंने। ओके। अनि जना तुम का फॉगिव करुंग जाइना, बॉक्सुंग जाइना तेन्ना सेम मागडे मुड़पाचे, पूर्ण त्या मुन्शा जता गया, त्वेन तुझे नाऊंगे उपाचे, सर्वेस परासो अत्मो, मोजे रसा, देवान मका अभिषेक बोक्सुंग दी ना पो दी उंग जाई ना पोई त्या बंदा ना तलन सुटका दिल्या प्रेस कॉल मोली प्रेस कॉल थैंक यू जीसस थैंक यू जीसस गुड ओके एवंस गेटिंग डिस्टर्ब्ड गेटिंग डिस्टर्ब्ड फोकसिंग ऑन जीसस नो वन सिंकिंग शुअर नो वन सिंकिंग राइट ओके एवंस वॉकिंग ऑन वाटर यस प्रेस कॉल so now I'm going to lead you um, in a prayer. As I speak, okay, I want you all closing your eyes and now I want you to open your spiritual eyes. What are your spiritual eyes? Your imagination. Are we able to imagine nicely, everybody? Okay, okay, close your eyes, everybody. When I say fish, when I say fish, can you all imagine fish? Yes. Fried fish? Yes. Fish in the curry? Yes. Sure? Sheet curry? Yes. Praise God. Praise God. So we can imagine, right? We can see. When he says sheet curry, you can see that nice boiled rice. You can see the curry. You can see the fish. You can see? Okay. Same way as I speak, I want you to imagine. I want you to create that imagine because I'm going to take you right from your childhood to date. Okay, and we are going to let go, we are going to let go of every hurt, hurt, anybody that has hurt you. I want you to let go of that when they have said mean things against you, cursed you, anything. Okay, that one. Unforgiveness. If there is any form of unforgiveness, whoever that person is, I want you to let go. Okay, and if you cannot let go and you want somebody to help you journey through it, we are available, we can do a one-on-one -on -one prayer. But I believe, I believe that each one of us are equipped, are equipped with the right thinking, a sound mind, with self-control and the choice to make that decision today. Amen? Amen? Close your eyes. <clears throat> Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Bless your holy name. You're the King of kings. You're the Lord of lords. There's none like you, Lord Jesus. 
Thank you for dying on the cross for us. Thank you for being our redeemer, our savior. Thank you for taking everything that does not belong to your kingdom from us onto the cross. And in return, making us, each one of us, an heir of salvation. Lord, as it is said and declared in Galatians 3.13, that you have redeemed us from the curse of the law. We believe that none of us, our family members, our generations, are cursed. There is no curse on us, our families, and our generation. Whether it is health, whether it is any other curse, nothing. We belong to you, Lord Jesus. Today, Lord, we go back to times than when we were little, when we just began to understand what the world is. And all the words that were spoken to us, the discouraging words, Lord Jesus, the mean words, words that were not from your kingdom, words that spoke death. I give them all to you, Lord. I cast them onto you. Because I know, Lord, I am not a mistake. You knew me before I was formed in my mother's womb. Before you placed me there, Lord Jesus, you had already anointed me to be a prophet to nations. I receive that, Lord Jesus. I believe that I am anointed and that you have great plans for me as you have proclaimed in Jeremiah 29, 11. Plans to prosper me and not destroy me. Lord, sickness, sin, Satan, you have no power over me. Because I belong to the Most High God. My Abba Father protects me. I am under the protection of the Most High God. I live surrounded with the love of Christ. I am filled with, his love of, with the love of Christ inside out. I am filled with the love of Christ. Thank you, Jesus. Can we all say it together? Thank you, Jesus. I am filled with the love of Christ. Thank you, Jesus. I am filled with the love of Christ. Thank you, Jesus. I am filled with the love of Christ. Thank you, Jesus. I am filled with the love of Christ. Thank you, Jesus. I am filled with the love of Christ. Brothers and sisters, as I said this, are you able to imagine the love of Christ surrounding you? Yes. Can you see it with your spiritual eyes? You, Jesus is holding you right now. He's holding you. You have a pure spirit. Your spirit is as pure as Jesus. God loves you. You can walk boldly into the throne room of grace. And whatever you ask, it will be given unto you because you are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Amen. Receive it, brothers and sisters. I want you to imagine like a child if you have to. Create that imagination in your mind. Create that loving father in front of you. Holding you, drawing you close. Come. Come. All those who are burdened, come. I am here. Hold my hand. I will never leave you nor forsake you. You are mine. Can you see that happening? Receive it. Take it. It's yours. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I am giving away everything from my body. Do I have troubles? 
I am casting it on to Jesus. Jesus, take it. I am receiving your love instead of this worry. Take away the worry. Take away the depression. I am speaking to you sickness, cancer. I speak to you. I uproot you. And I cast you into the sea right now. I am filled with the healing. I am the healed protecting my health. Jesus died on the cross 2000 years ago and he took that cancer on the cross. Imagine that divine exchange happening right now. Receiving that wholeness, that healing. Take it into you. Say, I receive it, Lord. I receive that healing. Heart troubles. Anything to do with the heart, lungs, stomach, liver, kidney. Thank you, Jesus. I'm casting out all the sickness onto you, Lord Jesus. I lay it down and I receive your healing, your love. my bones, my joints, my tendons. I'm speaking to you, Lord Jesus. I'm speaking to the bones, my tendons, my ligaments, my muscles. And I command you to come in line in Jesus' name. Receive it. Receive that healing right now. Thank you, Jesus. Every blood vessel, every organ, every tissue, every cell of my body, of our bodies contains the life of God. The same spirit that rose Jesus from the dead lives in each one of us. And I receive that complete healing from the crown of my head to the soles of my feet. My nervous system, my respiratory system, my digestive system, reproductive system, and every other system that's in my body is healed. Functions perfectly just the way Lord, you God created it to function. Nothing missing, nothing broken, no malfunction, no chemical imbalance, no hormonal damage, nothing. Healed. Take it, it's yours. Receive it. As Jesus hung on that cross, imagine him hung, hanging on that cross. He's bleeding, battered, bruised. Bones are out of joint. He's breathing heavily, but he's smiling. As you look into those anointed eyes, you can see that he did it for you because he loved you and you alone. Receive that love. He loves you, brothers and sisters. He loves you. Take it, it's yours. Hold on to it and never let it go. And today, just the way you have received that love. I want each of you to take that, make a conscious decision of letting go of that unforgiveness that is there in the heart. Speak to yourself and speak to the Lord and say, I forgive. I forgive all those who have hurt me. Say it. I forgive everyone who has hurt me. Whoever that person is, think of that person. Hold that person in your arms and say it. I forgive you and I love you with the love of Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. My Lord and my God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I am healed. I am healed. Say it, I am healed, I am healed, I am healed, I am whole, nothing missing, nothing broken. I am filled with the love of Christ. Amen? Amen. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Okay, you can open your eyes. Let go. Were you able to let go? Anybody finding it difficult to let go? Praise God. 
Okay. Anyone has sensed that they have received their healing? Somebody with back pain? Anyone with back pain? Leg pain? Joints? Wow! Superb! Healed! Restored! Nothing missing, nothing broken. Fine, everyone fit? No one needs any healing? Hallelujah! Sure? Anyone? Anything? Anything? Any pain? Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Okay, uh, sister, tell me, how can we help you? Come to the side. My knees are paining, just so that I'm getting um, but chest pain and bad stomach aches, stomach gripe problem. Okay. okay. I have this milk product, egg product is not agreeing, not digesting, okay. not agreeing. I understood. And he, because of headache, I'm taking medicine. And You're taking medication. And for good memory, I'm taking these tablets. Okay. Praise God. So how long have you been suffering, sister? Many years past. Okay. Praise God. Praise God. Does anyone want to come and exercise their authority? Anyone? Come on. Come. Sorry. Come. Okay. You're okay if brother holds your hand? Are you okay? Come. I want, you to, I want you to close your eyes and repeat the prayer after me. Thank you, Jesus. Say, thank you, Jesus, for the gift of life. Thank you, Lord, for this precious gift, Lord Jesus, for the authority that you won back for me. And in your mighty name, I speak to the, to the sister's body, her mind, her stomach, her stomach, her legs, her, legs, her, tendons, her tendons, her joints, her joints and, every and every organ of her body, of, her body, of her body and I command it, I command it to, come in line, to come in line in Jesus' name. Jesus name. Knees, Knees come, in line. Come, in line. come in line. I'm speaking to your knees. Speaking to your knees. You, are you are healthy. There is no swelling. There is, no there is no inflammation. You are healthy, you are healthy. and function perfectly, and functions perfectly, perfectly, just the way God created it to function. Now you sister, I want you to say, thank you Jesus, thank you, Jesus. by your wounds, I am completely healed. Completely say again, thank you Jesus, thank you. by your wounds, I am completely healed. Thank you Jesus, 
by your wounds i'm completely healed thank you jesus by your wounds i'm completely healed thank you jesus by your wounds i'm completely healed thank you jesus praise you jesus you are my god my lord and my savior and i receive my inheritance thank you jesus praise god move your move your knees bend it like this bend move 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 your knees move did you have any difficulty walking no now the pain is gone gone yeah. praise god thank you jesus so your knees are bro sorry can i have a tissue jet sorry praise god praise god so knees are fine now okay stomach does the stomach give you trouble every time now it's stop praise god thank you jesus are you feeling good yeah. so now you know what to do what are you going to do next time when you feel that there is some sickness troubling you what are you going to do thank you jesus i'll see you say thank you jesus i am completely healed thank you jesus i am completely healed thank you jesus i am completely healed so whatever you see is a lie yeah. what you see is a lie why because jesus said by my wounds i am completely healed so you're going to say that yeah. praise god thank you jesus thank you jesus praise god praise god thank you jesus anybody else anybody else sure everyone's healed Come. don't feel shy you have the spirit of boldness you have they say the violent take the kingdom by force yeah violent in a good way because you belong to the most high god amen yeah the healing is yours claim it okay don't let go praise god thank you jesus praise the lord sister praise the lord yeah a day before yesterday i had to remove some bamboos and go to somebody's house so the last two steps of bamboos i did not remove and i tried to go in i fell with my right knee going behind oh and uh, one another leg another place with both my hand i just was down mm. then i felt i could not bring my leg in front so okay. they said they will lift me up i said no wait i'm going to get up and you know i felt like i can do it means uh, nothing is broken and nothing is uh, missing missing so i said uh, i i will do wait i said wait don't touch then after that uh, they told me you have to do one thing is uh, salt water hot okay. water mm. but i prayed about it mm. before because when i was walking home i was getting pain okay so i went home and i told them at home and i was praying about it that nothing is broken mm. nothing is missing nothing is wrong i was praying and i took that salt water and all like done and next day morning i'm very fine Praise so god. as if like nothing happened it is so good that god is with us always yeah he will never praise god so thank you yeah praise, praise god. god thank praise you praise god thank you jesus superb superb any questions how to use kingdom principles suppose i come into a situation what am i going to be doing what are you going to do now when you go back home and you face a situation what are you going to do i'll tell you what i do sometimes you know many times when we are sitting we don't remember scriptures especially when you are in a situation do you have a favorite hymn everybody you have a favorite hymn I have battle songs okay and my bathroom is my war room so whenever i go for my shower no i get the biggest revelation in the shower i am a bathroom singer i will sing pray in tongues everything in the bathroom as the water flows i believe it's the blood of christ flowing on me all my sicknesses anything that tries to come and trouble me i bash them up in the bathroom and i sing my battle songs there are so many new songs in fact there is um i sing um you know surrender there's another song called surrender which says it may look like i'm surrendered but i'm actually surrendered by you 
surrounded. Surrounded, sorry. It may seem that I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. There's another one called Raise a Hallelujah. I don't know how many of you would have heard that. Raise a Hallelujah. I sing that. I have, for me, whenever I am battling, I do a praise and worship. Because whenever you praise, the presence of the Lord is so strong that mountains melt like wax in the presence of the Lord. You don't remember scripture? No problem. Just say Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Why? Because what did Jade say in the morning? Because in the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. Jesus is the name above all names. What are your mountains? What are your mountains? Children's behavior? They are mountains, right? How my child is behaving. My child is not in the word. My child doesn't go to church. Huh? Mountains, right? Yeah. My child doesn't listen to me. My child is only playing video games. Only on the phone. Who has to change? Who has to change? When your child sees you change, rather than nagging, but only treating them with the love of Christ, you see how your child changes. I have witnessed it. I did not expect Jade to change. I did not expect myself to change, honestly. But when you receive Jesus, your desires, whether they are addictions, alcoholism, whether it's shopping, whether it is anything else, excessive eating, they all leave you. You don't have to leave. You don't have to leave it. They leave you. Because the presence of the Lord is so strong. So can we start exercising our authority, all of us? What is your authority? I can speak to the mountains. Mark 11, 23. Speak to your mountain. Tell it what to do, where to go. What to do? Be uprooted from wherever it is, your life, your body, your house, and be planted into the sea in the mighty name of Jesus. I can have what I say. Why? I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Amen? Amen? Amen. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Anybody else with any questions, anything, please let me know. Okay? I think we're here for... Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. I have a problem. Like, uh, I had an operation eight years back, mm. and uh, it is operated mm. nearly, uh, mm. and two screws are there. Mm. And uh, up till now, eight years now, still uh, it is uh, a lot of pain. I had a uh, while walking and all, mm. even this pain. Mm. Uh, every month I go to a doctor mm. for checkup and all. So many times doctors say you have to go on operation for knee replacement, even mm. for arthritis. Mm. But my hands now it is uh, like a, a numbness mm. and I have a pain also. Twice I felt I still that this band is not wetting. A lot of pain while walking, I can't step, uh, climb the steps, a problem for me. So I'm just praying. I believe God has already healed me. So God will heal you? God has already healed me, I believe. You believe? Praise God. Then God has already healed you. Okay. Okay. Now, question. When you close your eyes, what do you see? Do you see yourself walking straight, running, dancing? Do you see it? Can you see it? Close, close your eyes. Don't open it. I want you to imagine yourself right now. Before you had all this trouble, I want you to imagine yourself when you were in your 20s. When you used to walk, were you walking with high heels? But you were walking. Yeah, medium heels. I want you to imagine yourself walking with those medium heels. Can you see yourself? Can you see? You're walking straight. Are you limping? Do you feel any pain? When you're walking with those heels? Open your eyes. Walk. Lift, march, march, 
मच बेंड 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 गेट अप बेंड प्रेस गॉड फीलिंग द पेन प्रेस गॉड वॉट हैपन वॉट डिड यू डू कम वॉट डिड यू डू वॉट डिफरेंट डिड यू डू राइट नाउ आई स्टार्टेड वॉट डिड यू डू सी यू बिलीव दैट यूर हील्ड राइट बट डिड यू सी योर सेल्फ हील्ड अर्लियर कुड यू सी योर सेल्फ नो now you created an imagination of your self healed yes? yes did you receive your healing then yeah thank you praise god thank you jesus thank you jesus so whatever whatever your sickness whether it's a stomach maybe today you may not want to come up but remember power of imagination when you close your eyes if you do not see yourself healed you are not healed if you close your eyes and you see yourself healed you see yourself doing things that you cannot do physically now if you can see it that healing is yours god has given you the power of imagination are you battling sickness now are you battling any kind of sickness I want you to close your eyes and receive that healing first inside here with your spiritual eyes. Before you see it in the physical, it has to come into the spiritual. Do you understand? Do you have questions? Do you have questions to add to that? Anything? Anything? You can ask me anything. See, this is my experience. This is how my life has changed. For me, the power of imagination is such a big God-given gift. your spiritual life we are spirit beings we have to exercise our spirituality if we don't we will be battling and battling and battling and not receiving any healing that's why so many of us we will be saying the scripture 100 times 200 times and we don't see our healing because we cannot see with our spiritual life see with your spiritual life claim that healing praise god hallelujah fine thank you jesus now let's see how many of your us are doing lord is at our come on <coughs> come on come on i know sleepy little little bit my come on stretch stretch for the lord reach for the skies <laughs> praise god nobody is feeling shy okay we have the spirit of we have the spirit of boldness are we looking at ourselves and feeling shy that is pride we have the spirit of pride no praise god thank you jesus for the lord is my tower and he gives me the power to tear down the works of the enemy in a difficult hour he will crush the devourer and move the powers of darkness underneath my feet stomp it it doesn't belong here it belongs down praise god amen, amen. hallelujah amen. thank you jesus god is good all the time, all the time. God is good. and all god's people say amen. amen thank you jesus praise god, god.